Morning Church, welcome to today's online devotion. So good to have you with us. Whether you're watching from your email and reading there or you're on any of our social me social media platforms, it's great to have you with us. And super excited to share one of my favorite, most memorable verses. I'd say this was would be one of my life verses and so I'm super excited to share it with you. And I'm believing that's going to help you, strengthen you, and encourage you for today. And um, love the fact that we get to read the word together and just for a few moments take just a few minutes just to think about God's word together, what it means for our life, for our day, and pray together. So today's verse is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. And I know it'll be familiar with many of you. It says this, As a prisoner for the Lord then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Paul speaking to the Ephesian church and encouraging us today. As a prisoner for the Lord, Paul speaking, I urge you to live a life worthy of of the calling that you've received. We're going to start just by thinking for a moment about how he starts chapter 4 verse 1 as a prisoner for the Lord. As a prisoner for the Lord. I don't know about you, maybe you're, well I know you're more holy than me, but have you ever thought, you know in those weak moments that you've looked at somebody else's life and you've just maybe thought, ah oh, it's okay for them. It's all right for them. They're a life group leader, you know, or everything seems to go okay for them because they've known and had a relationship with God for way more years than me. I'm just new to God, new to faith, or, you know, relatively speaking, I'm young. It's okay for everybody else. And you can kind of look at anyone else's life and make an excuse maybe for the fact that you're in a difficult situation. Life's dealt you a difficult blow and you end up thinking, maybe not even saying, but just thinking it's okay for them. It's okay for you. You don't know what I've been through and yet Paul speaks to the Ephesian church with these words as a prisoner for the Lord. Paul is in the middle of a really bad situation. He's confined, he's held up, locked up, he's restricted, he's restrained, he, he can't live in the freedom that he wants and yet from his prison cell he's saying to everybody, it doesn't matter what situation you might find yourself in, I can identify to an extent because I'm speaking to you, I'm writing to you from a prison cell. Whatever you're going through today, Paul is speaking to us, writing from a prison cell. Whatever restriction or confinement or limitation that you find yourself in, Paul finds the strength from God to encourage us from a difficult spot. I believe that wherever you're at today, God can strengthen you even in your prison cell or wherever you're at today. Your difficult limitation, your restriction of life or however you're feeling limited today that you can encourage somebody else even from your prison cell. Paul said as a prisoner for the Lord. Whatever situation you're in today, you can say I'm in this situation to give God glory. This is the chief aim of every one of our life is to glorify God. You can glorify God whether you're in a great situation or a dire situation. Whether things are going really well for you or things are falling apart, you can still glorify God. And that is your chief purpose in life, to bring God glory. As a prisoner for the Lord, he says, I urge you. I love the passion and urgency and and commitment and resolve in Paul's words here. I urge you. 
you can sense the the almost desperation in his words from his prison cell you know he's saying to the ephesian church i can't get alongside you i i I can't you know walk you through your situation I, I can't speak to you face to face I, I can't encourage you with my words but I'm urging you as much as I can from my situation from my prison cell through the words that I'm writing I'm urging you his passion passionate plea and cry is for you to do something great with your life in Colossians 1 right at the end of the first chapter of Colossians chapter 1 Paul says that he's struggling with all of the energy of God the Holy Spirit energy that so powerfully is working in and through him I love how Paul has this continual uh, sense of God's power and presence that is empowering him to live every moment of life and in every letter you see Paul reaching through the pages saying come on church lift your game I heard you now and Paul speaks to us in 2021 20, and says come on as a prisoner for the Lord I'm in a bad situation but through the pages of scripture scripture I'm urging you I'm pleading I'm crying with you please come on live something great verse Number one says, as a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you, for what? What's he so passionate about? To live life. I urge you to live life. Live a life. Don't exist. Don't just go through the motions today. Live life. Come on. Live life today. Today you can live life. Whatever your schedule might be, you might look at your calendar and think, oh my goodness today is just like back-to-back -back meetings it, it looks monotonous it looks like I'm just doing the regular maybe the opposite and you've got nothing in your diary you're thinking oh my goodness just to, I, I just need to make it through today or I just need to make it to summer or I just need to make it through 2021 or whatever it is we've got a destination mindset where somewhere else or some time else is always going to be better than where we're at but Paul urges us as a prisoner for the Lord I urge you to live life today make the most of every opportunity Paul urged the Ephesian church I urge you to live life finally says this the life I want you to live and I'm urging you to live is not the life dictated by your prison cell as a prisoner. The life I want you to live is not dictated by your circumstance or by the ceiling or limitation that you feel is over your life. The life I want you to live is a life worthy of the calling that you've received. In other words, Paul is saying live up not live down live up to your calling not down to your limitation live up to the God word to your life not down to what everybody else's opinion of your life is live up to what God's calling greatness out of you not to what your past is trying to hold you back to live up not down live up to the God call on your life and for every one of us today God is calling us up to the God life to the worthy of his calling on your life as a prisoner for the Lord I urge you to live life today worthy of the calling that you have received today God has got life for you he wants you to live up to the God word today you can do something incredible and influential today through the life that you live if you will walk representing the image of God that you carry you watch what happens with a life like that consistently living up to the life worthy of the calling a couple of questions number one I wonder what you would say are ceilings on your life what are the ceilings that you would perceive on your life maybe you can spend just a minute to write some down 
But we're going to look at them in a second and we're going to pray and believe by faith that God is going to speak to you and smash every ceiling. Second question, more importantly, what has God called me up to? What kind of lifestyle is he calling me up to? What kind of personal devotion to God is he calling me up to? What kind of purpose in this life is God calling me up to? What is the eternal purpose that God today is calling me up to? What is God calling you to do? We're going to look and think about some of the ceilings in light of God's call. And we're going to believe that God today is going to break ceilings. He's going to call us to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Can we pray together? God, I just thank you for everybody watching this today. We thank you for the power of your word. Thank you that if thousands of years ago, as Paul was writing from a prison cell to the church, even in his restriction and limitation, he spoke words that were to break ceilings, to break limitations. And those words are still relevant to us. Paul, through scripture, speaks to us to, for us to live life today and live a life that's worthy of the calling that, you, that we have received. We thank you. Your word is powerful, effective. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. Today, if we will obey your word and live according to your word, we will live productive and effective lives. We thank you, Jesus, that you have given us today as a gift. And may we embrace it and maximize the potential you've given us today. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, thanks so much for tuning in, watching our devotion. And uh, God is going to bless your devotion to the scripture and to living out the calling that he's got for you. We can't wait to see you on Sunday at church. Love you. Have a great week. And we will speak soon. God bless you.